Good morning everyone, Stephen Lee here. In this video, I'll be providing an update on the $1,400 stimulus payments and where things currently stand and what's changed. I'll be covering the following four questions in this video. The first one is, what are the newly proposed targeted income thresholds? Okay, because those have changed. Um, number two is, who qualifies, right? Because that has also changed. Uh, number three is, which year will be used to test income? Okay. And number four is, what will be the, what is the expected timing of this third round of stimulus checks? So let's get right into question number one. What are the newly proposed targeted income thresholds? You know, previously they were saying that the target income thresholds would be lower than rounds one and two of the stimulus checks. But in this round, and the newly proposed um, legislation is that for singles, they'd be eligible for a full payment if your income is under $75,000, okay? Income is probably gonna be AGI, adjusted gross income, just like rounds one and two of the stimulus payment, right? The phase out of um, the stimulus payment for single individuals who are, will be between $75,000 and $100,000, okay? So for example, if you're a single individual and you make over $100,000, you are ineligible for any stimulus payment. But if you make between seventy-five dollars and $100,000, you're gonna be eligible for a reduced payment under $1,400. For head of household, the full payment is up to $112,500 worth of income and a full phase out at $150,000. Okay. For um, households filing married, filing jointly, full payment up to $150,000 of income and a full phase out at $200,000 worth of income. So these income limits are very similar to round number two of the stimulus checks. You know, remember there is a hard cap on income. So if you're single head of household or married filing jointly and you're above that 100,000, 150,000 or $200,000 threshold, even a dollar over, right? You will be ineligible for a stimulus payment and your entire household will be ineligible for a stimulus payment in round number three. Remember, if this is the kind of content that you're looking for, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications. We also continue to update you on any developments. All right, let's go to question number two. Who qualifies here? Because this has changed. Okay. Remember, um, individuals would need to have a valid social security number. Okay. Couples where only one spouse has a valid social security number, the payment would be $1,400 rather than $2,800, okay? Remember, um, right now the proposal is for $1,400 $1, per qualified individual. So qualified households that are filing married, filing jointly would be eligible for $2,800 and then plus $1,400 per qualified dependent. So dependency has also changed here, who qualifies, right? Um, once again, dependents will also need a valid social security number to be eligible. Remember in rounds one and two, only children 16 years and younger were eligible for an added stimulus payment. Okay, remember uh, 16 and younger, so basically under the age of 17. But as of this morning, the latest proposal would also include 17 year olds and adult dependents to be eligible for a payment. This would include, um, kids like college students as well as adult dependents that you claim on your tax return. Okay, so this is a big change, right? Because in the previous rounds one and two, only those that were under the age of 17, so 16 and younger, were qualified for a stimulus payment if they were claimed as a dependent. But in this next round, the proposal is to include those children, you know, under, um, you know, whether college students, grad students, you know, sometimes under the age of 24, right? If they're a qualified child dependent, they may be qualified as well as adult dependents that you claim on your tax return may qualify for this round. So this is great. So question number three, which year will be used to test income? Okay, it's gonna be either 2020 or 2019. Your latest filed tax return is what they're gonna use when they send out this third round of stimulus checks. One thing that's interesting here is what the IRS is saying is that if your 2020 return is not fi is filed and or processed after the IRS sends you that third round stimulus payment, the IRS may send you a second payment for the difference between what your payment should have been if it was based on your 2020 return. So for example, if they send out the third round stimulus payment, let's say in early April, but you file your 2020 return come April 15th. Okay, so basically in this scenario, you filed your 2020 return after they've sent out the third round of stimulus payments. 
And let's say based on your 2020 return, your stimulus payment should have been more. For example, let's say you had an additional child in 2020 or you adopted or you fostered in 2020 that was not included on your 2019 return, then your stimulus payment should have actually been more, right, in 20, based on your 2020 return. So the IRS is saying here is they may send you a second payment to make up for that difference between your 2019 qualifier and 2020 qualifier, which is great. Okay, let's go to question number four. What is the timing here? You know, what is what is the um, kind of where, what is the timing and the schedule of when this third stimulus check should come out? Right, the House is expected to begin the process of bringing a third check to vote over the next two weeks. Okay, so over the next two weeks, hopefully, the House is able to put this together, get it signed and passed. Okay, through both House and the Senate, as well as to the President. Okay, as well. So. And timing right now is over the next two weeks, you'll continue to hear different re revisions to this bill and proposal, and I'll continue to update you on that. And legislation is expected to be passed before mid-March, right? After which it will take a few weeks um, before payments are actually sent out. Okay, so if let's say this bill is passed, um, let's say the second week of March, and let's give the IRS and the Department of Treasury about two to three weeks, right, to get all these payments out, whether it is direct deposit or uh, paper checks or debit cards. Um, wait about, so we're probably thinking about maybe the end of March, early April is probably the earliest in which a stimulus payment should be expected for round number three. Um, um, one thing that we want to know is that the reason why mid-March is continuously um, brought up is because, remember, federal unemployment benefits it's, is, is set to expire March 14th, right? So they want to pass this bill before the federal unemployment benefits expires, okay? So that's why mid-March is continuously the, the target and when this next bill uh, is, they're trying to pass this next round, right? This next bill before unemployment benefits expires. All right, once again, if this is the kind of content that you're looking for, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications. I'll continue to update you in regards to the stimulus payments, as well as PBP, EIDL, and other tax updates. Till next time, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.